Good morning guys. Today I've got another quick tip tutorial for you. I want to quickly talk to you about file management. So let's jump into After Effects quickly. So I've got this file here with the character that we used earlier to do the character rig tutorial. Um, I'm just going to show you an example of how to keep your file organized. This is important for if you leave a file for say three months and if you come back to it, if nothing's organized, you'll have no idea what's going on and you could waste several hours just trying to figure out how everything was working, which is not ideal. So let's just do a quick example. So if I quickly select everything associated with the head, we'll make a quick pre-comp. And we'll call this head. And then let's say we wanted to easily identify where our hands and legs are, arms and legs, sorry. So if we select the arm for the front and the arm for the back, which I labelled hands, um, we'll make these a different colour here so we can easily identify them. So let's say arms are green. Oh, that's because that is the hand. Sorry, okay. So we'll do, we'll do this slightly differently. We'll do the front arm is going to be green. So that should be the arm and the hand, yep. And the back one will be red, if I can find red. There we go. So there we go. We can visually see over here that we have the green for the arm, red for the other arm. And then we'll do the same with the legs. So we'll go yellow and blue. So now we can see... Oh, here we go. Here are our legs. There's our arms, etc. And you can continue to do this. So if you were to go in the torso, and if you were to have some puppet tools, and if you used Juic, and then you were to select your your pins here, and you made some bones. I'm not going to do this whole thing properly. But then if you reorganized it so it's by the torso, and then these were all linked to each other, you could then select all of these and say your torso is going to be purple. So then everything associated with the torso would be purple. And then you get this visual color system going on of everything that you need in order to make your character move. <coughs> and because you built the color system, you will be able to remember which one is which, which is a very handy way of working. So let's just say you had a scene where you have two characters working and interacting with each other and so say we have the head composition here so we can animate all the facial expressions etc and then here where we've got the arms and legs and stuff when you've got s several characters it can get a little bit confusing as to which composition is which so if I quickly get rid of that I'll show you an example. If we come up to the project panel and create a new version, um, Command D, I seem to be missing the new one, um, and we'll do the same with the head. And then we've got these two different. So if I open this up, we've got character two and head two. I'll have to quickly replace the head. There we go. So now character 2 has head 2 in it. Let's say these were different characters. I haven't got two characters drawn but just for the sake of the tutorial we can pretend. So first of all when you're working away these aren't very visual and it would be nice if you could easily identify which is associated so this head is associated with this character and this one is associated with this character and obviously if you had a more complex character you would have more compositions so if you come up to the project panel here you can actually select these colors here as well so we could make this character red and then this character can be blue that was not blue sea foam no so now when we look I have labelled them wrong. I'm being an idiot. So this one is blue. And this one is red. So now we can see character one is red and head is red. 
So now we've got the associating layers compositions coloured for us so we can quickly refer to which one in particular if I show you quickly I should have had this set up if I go to my Dribbble account one of the projects I worked on this one here I had several compositions and two characters working in sync to do this tug of war and this is when I discovered this trick because it was getting really confusing so I had his face his face and then separate compositions for the rope etc to make that shot work so by having everything colour coded I could e visually see which layers associated to which character which was very handy um, finally let's go through organising your your project panel so usually I would create a a new composition and I would call this one render maybe in capitals as well so it stands out so what this means is when you come into the file this is the project that you have to render so then you would have your associating characters inside of here so let's chuck them both in. We'll quickly click scale and if we flip it and then we'll go to character rig 2 and just turn that background off quickly. So now we can see we've got two characters and if these were all lovely and animated you'll see that <coughs> they're now in the render composition so we've got our separate animations and this is how you would render so it's good to have a main composition with your renderer and then I have one which says assets this is where I put my layers and solids which build up the compositions and then finally I have a comps where I put all the individual compositions so we have this nice little file management system with the main one, the renderer, being outside. So we know this is the master controller, the master composition, sorry, so we can easily quickly jump in and then if we need individual parts they're in the compositions and then you can take this even further again by adding another folder and you could call it scene one and then drop the assets and compositions for scene one in there and then if you were to create a new one if you've got like say 20 scenes in your short animation you can have scene 2 and inside of here you would have another assets and compositions so yeah now we got all this set up say if you had a client who got back to you say four months down the line and they obviously liked your animation but then they wanted a slight tweak and they said uh, we didn't like scene one there was an issue with character one uh, we didn't like his face animation so then we could jump into the head quickly navigate through our files make the update they wanted and then close all that go to your render and then you just need to send it to media encoder and then you've uh, done the quick update really quickly without having to worry about finding layers and figuring out how to how you did the animation again and stuff like that so yeah it wasn't exactly a, a fun tutorial today but it really helps to uh, keep your project uh, running smoothly um, that's it for today if you've liked what you've seen try subscribing to my channel uh, share it with your friends and if you've got any ideas for any tutorials send me a an email and I'll happily put together something for you. Uh, that's all folks, uh, take care.